Virtual tables are a new addition to Foundry that let you access data in external source systems without needing to transfer that data into Foundry. This is a big deal for a couple of reasons. First, it makes integrating Foundry into existing IT architectures much easier because you can take advantage of existing investments in data warehouses without needing to transfer either data or logic into Foundry. Second, virtual tables offer a shortcut to getting started with Foundry's ontology and AIP capabilities. They do this by letting you use the data in the external source systems to back object types in the ontology and downstream of that, power AIP functions. Additionally, virtual tables make certain data engineering and analytical tasks more performant and potentially even cheaper. In this tutorial, I'll cover how do you set up and use virtual tables, how they're different than data sets, and I talk about when you should use them. If you want to learn more about Foundry or AAP than what I cover in this tutorial, you can check out ontologize.com for the rest of our free tutorials or sign your team up for a live Foundry and AIP training. With that said, let's dive into virtual tables. First, let's cover how to set up virtual tables and start using them in Foundry applications. To begin, you'll need a source in Data Connection. If you're not familiar with Data Connection, I've made a 10 minute tutorial that covers all the essentials. Here we've got a Snowflake data warehouse, and we can see that there are several tables in this data warehouse. To create a virtual table instead of a sync, I can either go to the Virtual Tables tab up here, or on the Overview tab here, I can create a virtual table from this pane right here. I'll click Create Virtual Table. It fills in the database schema, and now I just have to pick the table that I want. I'm going to choose Entrances Clean, which is uh, a table of people entering the theme park. That is, they're going to void their ticket as they enter, and we're going to record when they entered the park and when they exited the park. I'm going to save that in my project tutorial virtual tables, and then click Create. At this point, I can open the virtual table, and what I'll see is that it looks a lot like a data set, except with fewer options. One of the things I can do is analyze this table and contour. I can filter down just like I would with a regular data set. And I can chart entrances to the park over time. Even though this data doesn't reside in Foundry, all of Contour's boards still work. To Contour users, this should feel just like working with a regular data set. And depending on your data scale and how you've got your source system set up, it could be even more performant. What's happening here is that Foundry's pushing the query down to the source system. So in this case, it's going to be executed by the warehouse that I've set up in my Snowflake data warehouse. If in the cases of uh, systems that don't have their own compute layers, such as AWS S3, Foundry will handle the compute even though it still uses the data stored in that external system. In addition to Contour, virtual tables are also compatible with Foundry's point-and-click data engineering tool, Pipeline Builder. Let's take a look at that. Okay, I'm going to create a new pipeline. I'll just leave it at, with the default name and the default location. It's a batch pipeline. And even though it says initial pipeline data sets, I'm actually going to use a virtual table here. So like with the data set, I could transform this. I could join it or union it or do any of the other stuff I normally do. But what I'm going to do is create a new object type. I'm going to call this park entrance. Just double check that all the columns are being mapped to the right data types. And that's right, an ontology. Select a location for this pipeline, which will be the virtual tables. Hit save. Now I can save the pipeline and deploy it. And this will create the new object type of that being the park entrance. Again, every time somebody voided a ticket to get into the park. And we can go to open the objects, where we can see all of the park entrances. While what I've got here is how I expect most people to use virtual tables most of the time in Pipeline Builder, that is just creating a simple object type using the data in that external system, you can use all of Pipeline Builder's regular capabilities, such as joining virtual tables together or to other data sets, transforming them in some way, or whatever other data engineering tasks you would normally accomplish in Pipeline Builder with data sets. Again, if you want to learn more about what that looks like, take a look at my Intro to Pipeline Builder tutorial. It's pretty clear that virtual tables offer many of the same capabilities as data sets for the purposes of data engineering, ontology design, and analytics. But how do they differ? To reiterate, the main difference is that virtual tables store their data in the external systems where that data already resides, and data sets store their data in Foundry. 
This lets datasets offer additional functionality above and beyond what virtual tables can, such as version control, history, etc. The other main difference is which applications support datasets and which support virtual tables. Datasets are widely supported throughout Foundry, but virtual tables are still getting support rolled out to them application by application. At the time of recording this tutorial, you can use virtual tables, for example, in Contour, but you can't save the outputs as data sets like you normally would. Or, for example, you can't yet use them in code repositories, although Python transforms is a work in progress as we speak. For a full application compatibility matrix, check out the Foundry docs. Finally, one difference that will be a little harder to plan for is how using virtual tables in lieu of data sets will change the allocation of costs. For example, when I use Contour on a virtual table from Snowflake, that cost is going to be borne by the warehouse in Snowflake, not Foundry. Exactly how this changes your bill will depend on how big the data is, how you configured the external system's compute layer, and how much usage that table gets. One usage pattern that should be easier to plan for is if your external system has egress costs associated with it. In that case, if it's a table that receives a lot of interactive usage, you might want to consider a synced dataset instead that updates once a day or on a regular basis, especially in an incremental manner. That would reduce the egress costs associated with its use. Today, virtual tables are available for a few different source systems. There's Google BigQuery, Snowflake, AWS S3, and Azure Blob Storage. The question then becomes, if one of those systems is relevant to you, when should you opt for virtual tables over datasets? The simple answer, at least for Ontologize, is that we're going to use virtual tables whenever possible. It will be our new default. There's a couple of reasons for this. One reason is that I can auto-register virtual tables in Foundry. Instead of registering individual tables from a data warehouse, I can specify that I want Foundry to periodically check for new tables and to automatically create corresponding virtual tables in Foundry. This means that my whole external data warehouse is discoverable by default within Foundry. Another reason is that I get many of the same capabilities that raw datasets give me. I can still create data pipelines, I can still analyze the data, and I can even use them to back object types in the ontology. Here you see us looking at virtual tables and datasets in the context of the data lineage app. Finally, if I need a capability that only datasets offer, I can either create a simple transform downstream of the virtual table, or I could replace the virtual table with the data connection sync that updates on a regular basis. There are two other reasons to use virtual tables that I can think of as well. One, if your data scale is so large that storage costs are a real concern for you, virtual tables will help reduce that because they don't transfer data to Foundry. Second, if your IT architecture plan calls for a strict isolation of compute or data into some particular data warehouse or other external system, and you don't want that in Foundry, well, virtual tables will let you deploy Foundry in much closer adherence to that plan than you otherwise could have with just data sets. All in all, virtual tables are a welcome addition to Foundry's capabilities and will make the platform a lot more appealing to organizations that already enjoy well-organized data warehouses. As always, if you have additional questions about virtual tables or want to learn more about our live trainings for Foundry and AIP, please reach out via the comments, LinkedIn, or our website, ontologize.com. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next tutorial.